verse you have, some of the words are going to sound different. But we can close that gap. Ephesians what? Uh, chapter 6, starting at 10, going to 20. This is called Christian Warfare. And some of the things that y'all have spoken on this right here in this text. So God always keeps us in line with what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading it. Okay. It says, finally, this is, the, this is Paul the Apostle. He says, finally, be strengthened by the Lord and his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so yeah. that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Yeah. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but yeah. against the rulers, against the authorities, yeah. against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. Mm. This is why you must take up the full armor of God yeah. so that you may be able to resist in the evil day. Wow. And having prepared everything to yeah. take your stand, Stand, therefore, with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with the readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take the shield of faith, and with it you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Yeah. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm. And then he says, Pray at all times in the spirit wow. with every prayer and request and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Yes. For also, pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness yeah. the okay. mystery of the gospel. Yeah. For this, I am an ambassador in chains, meaning he was in prison for this. So wow. he's fighting for this. Yeah. Wow. Pray that I may be bold enough in him to speak as I should. Wow. This is one of my favorite passages. So we're going to go back to verse 10. Yeah. Paul is uh, at the end of, end of his exhortation to uh, Ephesus. And he says, finally. 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 Let this be known. He's closing it out. This is after he had given directives. He said, do not be vulnerable to the enemy. Do not be vulnerable to temptation. Yeah. Do not be vulnerable to the things of this world. Do not gratify our flesh. It says be strengthened by the Lord. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we like to call this a movement, right? Mm. Yeah. Some things you can't move on your own. Wow. We're not strong enough. I don't care if you're deadlifting 2,000 pounds, bench pressing 2,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Your strength does not compare to God's. Amen. So it says lean on his strength, okay. the Lord's vast strength. Yeah. Put on the full armor of God. Yeah. Not half her armor, not some of her armor, not a quarter of his armor. Put on the full armor <laughs> right. of God. Yeah. You're not going nowhere unless you put on the full armor of God. God. Yeah. So this movement can't move unless we are in God's strength. Yeah. And we put on the full armor that he has given to us. Yes. Mm. Man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that on. word for armor or, full, or the word for full. Or the definition for full is having all the necessary or appropriate parts. Yes. Quit me. So we can't have, like yes. I said, we can't have half of it. You are. If you have half of it, there's a chink in your armor. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. enemy is ready to swing that sword right into where he sees that crack. Wow. Right? Oh, my goodness. Wow. And if he penetrates your armor and you're not built up in his strength, it's going to be much harder to come back. Yeah. You're going to be fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. Yes. But it says vast strength. In this book, it says vast strength. That means great or extent. Mm. So we can't, we don't have enough strength to do it on our own, like I said. I don't care how strong you feel that you are, you go out there and keep trying to fight fight the world on your own. Yeah. Look around. There's so much nonsense going on. There's COVID-19 and all this stuff. And people, believers, people who believe in, in Jesus Christ, the one who conquered the world, he conquered sin, he conquered death. And we're supposed to believe in him. We're supposed to be his body. And we're walking around afraid. Wow. Why? Because we're not all built up in the full armor of God. Yeah. We're only built up in some of the armor. Right. Oh, I'm going to pray a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go to church on Sunday and drop a little money in the plate. And that's all I'm going to do. And yeah. then when something like this come around, we're walking around. Yeah. Buy a little toilet paper. What toilet paper going to do? Wipe your booty grub? It ain't, ain't going to keep the uh, COVID-19 from coming inside of you. Exactly. My goodness. Where are we at? Verse 11? Yes, sir. That word armor, the Greek word is panoplia, and it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for the spiritual helps that's supplied by God. 
for overcoming the temptation of the devil. Amen. So like I said, God gives us supplies to overcome the devil, yes. the temptation of the devil. Yes. So if you find yourself fighting temptation and temptation is getting through, that means you're not partaking in all the supplies that he's given you. Wow. Come on now. So as we begin to move on, I want somebody to give me 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. And remember, it says, stand. Yeah. stand. Stand against the devil. It doesn't say run. It doesn't say take off. It doesn't say punk out. It doesn't <laughs> say, uh, 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 well, we can weep before God because what we just seen was a perfect example of what we should be doing before God almost each and every day. Wow. Sure. Submitting ourselves to him. Second Corinthians. But it don't say punk out. It say you, you stand. Right. Second, Second Corinthians. Corinthians 10 and 4. Okay. Four. Do you have it? Yes, I have. Okay. You, can go, you can go ahead. All right. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but might in God for pulling down strongholds, mm -hmm. casting down arguments in every high thing mm -hmm. that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, mm -hmm. and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Whoa, wow. Amen. So it says our weapons are not carnal. That means they're not fleshly. They're not physical. Yeah, they're not physical. We have to depend on the gifts that God gave us gave us in the spirit to fight. Mm. Right? Since yeah. our, our weapons of warfare are not worldly. So we have powerful, we have power to to uh, go against those who who uh, try to call down our faith? So yeah. they're gonna they're gonna do every little thing be high minded and try to be more knowledgeable than God. Wow. They're gonna uh -oh. be more try to be more knowledgeable uh -oh. than God. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. And, <laughs> and God gave us this armor to fight them to stand. Yeah. To stand, you can't be more knowledgeable than God. I don't care what you say. Romans uh, one one and twenty, I believe, tells us that we all know that He exists. Oh, we all know that it exists. So yes. the people that's out there, they out there fighting against something that they already know exists, but they just want to fight against it because it goes back to the garden. Mm. Where we want to humanize God and we want to, we want to deify ourselves. Mm. Think about what wow. happened in the garden. Uh, uh, God gave them everything, everything they needed. Every. He just said, he had one command. He said, don't eat from that tree. It's going to cause you death. And they even had a tree that was in the garden that was called the tree of life. Right. And they could have partook in the tree of life. Wow. But Play what do we want to do? Play Play we want to do the thing that God told us not to do. Wow. We like to play with that. We like to play with that. We want to de we want to humanize God and deify ourselves. Wow. <laughs> and it's been happening since the beginning. Yes. And then uh, here on chapter or verse Verse 5, at the end of it, it says, take your thoughts captive to obey Christ. Mm. So that means when, when, your, when your thoughts start to wonder, it's for you, brother. <laughs> when your thoughts start to wonder, handcuff them things and give them back to Christ. Yes, sir. Take those thoughts captive and give them back to Christ. Yes, sir. Obey Christ. Mm. So that's why I told you, walk it out. Let it go. Mm. Give it to Christ. He's more powerful than we could ever be. So we already know that we're in the fallen world. People are going, people are going to backstab you. They're going to do all. They're going to two-time you. They're going to do a bunch of nonsense. Right. We already know that. And with, with us knowing that, we have to know that we have a full armor of God to fight against it, to stand. Yes. All right. So when it says to stand, like I said, it means not to run, not to back down, not to be soft, not to be timid. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. He didn't give us a spirit of timidity. But to take a bold stand yeah. against the tactics, the schemes, the wiles. There's a Greek word. It's called method, methodoia. Method. What, what English word do you hear in there? Method. method. So we have to stand against the methods of the devil. That de the devil word is an adjective. And it's an adjective that's always uh, affiliated with uh, high Satan or Satan. And that, that the, the devil means a slanderer. A slanderer or a false accuser. Mm. So those thoughts mm -hmm. that are going on is false accusations. Mm -hmm. It's trying to tell you that you are not who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's all he wants to do is to keep bringing you down, keep bringing you down. The more you be, Jesus faced the same stuff 
Paul faced the same stuff. Peter faced the same stuff. We all are going to face it. So face it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stand yeah. against it, though. Yeah. Stand against it. Because what verse are we on? I'm sorry. 11. I get excited. No, we on verse 7. 6. In 2 Corinthians, right? No, we on uh, back, back in Ephesians. You're back in Ephesians. Yeah. Okay. It says, for our battle is not against flesh and blood. So we knew, we know that our weapons are not of flesh. So we're not fighting flesh. Mm -hmm. right? right? We're fighting just the things that's beyond the flesh, the spirit, right. the demons, yes. demonic oppression. Yes. Not demonic possession, right. demonic oppression. That's for believers. Demonic um, possession is for somebody who's possessed by a demon. Mm. That means they're not in control of any of their actions. Now, an uh, oppressed person still has the Holy Spirit so they can fight, but we have to fight with them. Mm. No army goes out by them with, with just one person. Right. Right? Yes, sir. So that's why we're the body of Christ. We fight with each other. And this is also talking about angelic beings that fell from their state of innocence. So I need somebody to give me Genesis 131, and I need somebody to give me Jude verse 6. It says we're not fighting against, we're fighting for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, authority. So these are demons and these are uh, fallen angels. These people, these things are, like I said, looking for a chink in our armor and they're, they're around us all day trying to fight us. Genesis what? Genesis 131. Okay. Then God. Uh, then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. See, he said everything he made was good. And this is the God, again, who spoke everything into existence. Our God is in the heavens. The he does whatever he, he pleases. Mm -hmm. He's spoken into existence, and he said it was good. Mm -hmm. But then if you go to Jude 6, he, 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 had, he had his angels. They were good. He had them stationed where they needed to be. They, everything was good. But like I, again, like I said, the creation likes to test the creator. They like to... Uh, uh, Humanize or humanize God and deify themselves. So uh, we shouldn't be testing the Creator. We should be <laughs> submitting ourselves to the Creator. Right. If He created everything, that means He knows everything. Wow. So that means I know nothing better than Him. Jude what? Jude six, verse six. Hmm? And it says, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain mm. or position, but left their own abode. Mm. He was re he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So they left their proper abode. Why? Because they wanted to do what they wanted to do, not wow. what God said was good. Mm. In Genesis one thirty one, and that's kind of the same things we like to do. We just like to go against God, uh, but wow. you put on that armor. <laughs> you put on that armor, then you won't be doing that. Right. Uh, somebody give me Ephesians 2 2, and I'm going to leave y'all alone. <laughs> We're going to skip down to verse 13. 2 and 2? Yeah. It says, In which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world mm -hmm. and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, mm -hmm. the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Mm -hmm. So, Satan, prince of the power of the air, we used to follow him before yeah. we got saved, right? Yeah. And so now, when we put that armor on, we gotta go fight the other. We gotta go fight against the spirits that's controlling the other people who are still in that, who are still following the prince of the power of the air. Mm. So now we're gonna go to thirteen. This is why you must take up the full armor of God. So again, he says it again. Put on the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist. This time he says resist. So now, if they come at you, you can resist it in the evil day. Like I said, the evil is everywhere. Turn on Facebook. You don't have to scroll yeah. on before you start seeing a bunch of nonsense. Right. Turn on the news. You don't have to watch for more than two minutes before you're like, oh, this is, this is a bunch of doofuses out here. Doofuses. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, and have you prepared everything to take your stand. Stand, therefore, with truth like a belt. Now, Paul... Paul was a Roman citizen. He's a Jew. He's an Israelite. But he grew up as a Roman citizen. So I believe the 